Hello and welcome back to my channel. Well, today we're going to finally try and, well, I'm going to find, finally try and get this uh, fuel line in up over these body parts underneath the car here. Got, got everything out of the way that I could possibly get out of the way. And I'll have to actually cut it too in at least one spot so far in order to bend and twist it up over these braces and stuff underneath the car I'll show. Uh, I don't know how much of this operation I'll be able to show because I just don't have like a tiny little camera stand or anything like that uh, to try and show like while I'm doing this. But maybe I'll figure something out here to show like while I'm underneath there trying to get this thing maneuvered. Also, <clears throat> A uh, viewer reached out on my comments. Uh, he's working on a Pontiac Le Mans as well, 72, I believe. Hello, Maurice, and thanks for your comment. Uh, later on, after this is over, I'll include some footage of the uh, rear bumper brackets. Excuse me. Rear bumper brackets and how the front bumper is connected on. To the front of the car. Uh, I have a 70 GTO front clip on this car. It's originally a 70 Le Mans, but uh, like I said later on in the video, probably at the end, I'll have uh, some shots underneath the frame of how the brackets are attached to the frame going up to the bumper. Uh, I'm suspecting it's pretty similar to a 70 through 72 Le Mans. So now, now we'll get to the fuel line part. Okay, so now we're under the car. <clears throat> Here's the new fuel line. And it's pre-bent from, uh, from the manufacturer. And it has to go. It runs along the frame here. It actually goes through this part right here and then curves up behind this uh, frame brace right here. <clears throat> and this is where two of the trailing arms attach to and the springs and the shocks and all that stuff. So it goes like right up in between here. Probably saw in a previous video when I took this stuff out. And then comes up and over and then back this way to where this tube is this is where this is like how it connected on the on the line when they built it the short tube went into the hard line so that's what I gotta try and do <clears throat> so I'm just been looking at this here before I shot my intro and it kind of fits in here like this you know I got an idea how it's gonna go and I'm gonna have to actually cut it I'm thinking right here <clears throat> it's gonna have to be right here cuz any longer and I just don't know if I'll be able to bend it down uh, in order to flex this thing and get it through that member there and it's also got to go through this part too so I can actually move it forward and bring it back this way and then put I got pressure fittings for now uh, I'll, I'll run the car and see if they hold if not, I'll have to take it apart and put uh, AN fittings on it. Hopefully it won't come to that. So, that's what, I, that's, that's what I'm working with. Okay, I've made some progress. I'll show you what I got. This has been really hard. <clears throat> this piece right here, it looks nothing like... Uh, what it originally looked like. I've had to resort to bending and flexing it and pushing it out of shape because I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video but I'm pretty sure that when they built this at the factory the body was not on this car when they put this fuel line in because I just don't see how any way of they could have like manipulated this in here because I've been struggling with this for about an hour. Uh, and I finally got it up over. 
and somewhat in a position here. So it's almost there. I gotta bend and flex it some more. Um, there's gonna be some new mount points, that's for sure, to hold this thing into place. Uh, I don't know if this was a wise idea or not, but I had to resort to using a blowtorch and heating this up and straightening out some of the bends just in order to get this manipulated up over this up over this member right here and this is as far as I've gotten so far I'm gonna try and uh, get this as close as it has to be and figure out how to do some bends I don't know if I'll use the pipe bender or just flex it with the blowtorch again uh, but uh, this this is a real job I can tell you uh, if you're gonna do this uh, you're gonna have to go through all these steps because thinking that you're gonna be able to do this without taking the axle out and all that kind of stuff is just it ain't gonna work I'll get back to you guys when uh, I get done fooling around with this some more and uh, hopefully we'll get some sort of a result out of this okay it's been about four or five hours since the last cut that rear fuel line is giving me 10 ways to hell so I'm going to turn my attention to the fuel line that runs along the rail here and goes up to the fuel pump so in order to do this I had to take and move the cross member for the transmission out of the way because that's just how it goes in this is something I didn't want to do but it's something that has to be done if this is going to happen that opening right there where that red wire is going in that goes all the way through the frame to the fuel pump and I got the fuel line duct taped to that wire and it goes all the way through I had a, a coat hanger through there before just just to guide through to, to you know for something like this and so now I'm hoping to pull this wire and, and feed the fuel line through there so that I can put this all back together and, and, and at least get this part of it put on so here goes nothing I'm gonna get up there and pull this through Success. Yeah. Now, Let's see, we got the other end. I might be doing this all over again because I don't know. The fuel pump's going to get changed. It's going to be totally different. So it's called kind of like a wait and see kind of thing because I got to get the rest of it hooked up towards the back. This thing running? Okay. So it's been a long day, of course, again, of trials and tribulations trying to install this thing, but I did find some success. <clears throat> I got it through the frame and uh, circumvented the transmission cross member support and got it running across the frame here. It's it's pretty close to stock. Put all this rear end stuff back together and hook up the front fuel line 
you know, area there to the, the fuel pump and then continue on from there. So uh, next up is some footage for uh, one of my subscribers, his name's Maurice, he's working on a 72 Pontiac Le Mans and he wanted some video or pictures of how the bumper and the front bumper or clip goes on you know my car's a lot different the GTO has got a and my car's not even a GTO it's just a Le Mans it's got a GTO front end on it uh, it's it the the GTO uh, front and Dura bumper is quite a bit different from the 70 through 72 Pontiac Le Mans front bumpers and front ends and as a matter of fact I think this 72 is even an Endura bumper of some kind if I remember correctly and that one was quite a bit different from the 70 Pontiac Le Mans front end that I just like sold this past spring to a guy in Indianapolis so Maurice here's the footage for you I hope it helps you out uh, and, and here, here it is okay Maurice <sighs> Here's your part. Um, because I got the back of the car jacked up, I don't got much room at all. Um, so this is one of the brackets on the right hand side that's coming back off the front bumper. And it's just like connected to the, uh, the outside of the frame here. Uh, this nut right here, you see, uh, it's like a carriage bolt because I can feel back in behind here. Uh, you can feel the round head of a carriage bolt back there. And there's probably another one. Yeah, you can see that one way back there. See, I can see it, but you can't. Yeah, that one way back there. Boy, if I can zoom on that. Where's he at? It's not going to focus. That one right there. And so I really can't do that much more for you as far as pictures go and video footage. Okay, this is the passenger side on the front. This is the only side that I actually can actually see because of the battery, but the battery is blocking all the other stuff over there. So you can pretty much see the the bracket here. So this is this from the top now. You can see the bolt here. Here's the bracket. Here's another bolt holding it onto the frame right here. And this just curves up into. I get the camera can probably see more than I can. Now you can see, or I can even see too now a little bit while I'm filming this. Uh, the fr uh, the front as it goes up onto the Endura bumper and bolts up onto that. So uh, the way I remember is that this is this is different from a Pontiac Le Mans front end, the '72. Uh, but I hope this helps you out. Uh, we're going to go back to the back now and take a look at the bumper brackets back there. Okay, here we are at the back of the car. The lighting, the, the lighting's bad because it's early evening here. The sun's just starting to go down. But uh, <clears throat> here's this is the bracket that bolts onto the car for the back. I think 70 through 72 pretty much all the same. Uh, you can see this gap right here. Uh, this, uh, all I can say is that uh, a long time ago, like more than 20, 25 years ago, uh, someone that liked Pontiacs just as much as me, he was pretty good with body work. He, I paid him money along the way and got lucky. Uh, and he did a pretty good job uh, and did he saved me years of work I can tell you that but uh, I guess when it came to putting the bumper on and getting everything all put back together and getting the car back to me he kind of 
rush through some stuff. So there's supposed to be two bolts. And uh, there isn't, and it connects right here. And then the upper part, I can't even quite tell how that all goes on, but you can see an empty bolt hole here. And then on the other side, I'm sure there's another bolt, but you can see this bracket kind of continues up on. I'm wondering if that uh, bolts into the upper part there somehow as well. So uh, we'll take a look at the other side. Once again, you see the bottom bolt here. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, so there's another piece of bracketry right here. And here's a missing bolt out of a hole that needs it. This is, you know, I'm going to be, like, when I get the car running and the brakes on and all that stuff, this is going to be, like, one of my next parts right here is to take this apart and go through this and put it back together the way it's supposed to be. So you can see this is the... Uh, this is one of the bolts that holds up the bracket on, right? From the uh, from the other side, I guess I can see a little bit better now. But this is one of the other bolts that holds it on. And here's the empty one right here. And here, that's the socket there from the other side. But so I'm just getting. Uh, yeah, he only put in one bolt for the side right here too, because you can see this gap right here. It's it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but there's a gap. And let's see if I can see the bolt. Yeah, you can see just a little bit of it right there. But there is two bolts that go in that, that part of it right there. So, there you go. Um, I hope this helped you out. Uh, been hecking of an, it's been a uh, heck of a day again, working with this thing. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm, thanks for everybody stopping by to check out my videos. And uh, have a nice day.